Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, I'm treating my sorrow. I'm treating my shame. I'm in oh, to the joy of the Lord. I'm treating my sorrow. I'm treating my shame. I'm laying down for the joy of the Lord. I'm treating my I'm living down for the joy of the Lord. Ooh, I'm trading sorrow. I'm pleading my shame. I'm laying down for the joy of the Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrow. Trading my shame. I'm treating the shame. I'm laying down for the joy of the Lord. Trading my sickness. I'm treating my sickness. I'm treating my shame. I'm laying down. For the joy of the Lord. Ooh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, I say yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Trading my sorrows, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm treating my shame. I'm laying down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Ooh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Trading my sorrows. I'm treating my sorrow, treating my shame, I'm treating my shame, I'm living now 
for the joy of the Lord. Sickness, I'm treating my sickness. I'm treating my shame. I'm laying him down for the joy of the Lord. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, 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 shout to you, Lord. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, 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 it's my desire, this is my desire, <coughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us bow our head. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Is it This is my desire. This is my desire to honor you. All for my heart, I worship you. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath of my take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way, give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart, give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way.
Lord, have, Lord, have your way with me. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, you have your way with me. Father, we thank you for this moment, O oh Lord. We thank you for all that you're going to bring to us today in your word. And Father, we just thank you that you have our desire in your heart, Lord. Because your word said, let us rejoice in the Lord, for he will give us the desires of our heart. And this morning, we are thankful that we can have the desire that we can have that longing. Hallelujah. And this morning we just lift up your hand, your, your name, O oh Lord. Lift up our hands, O oh Lord, toward the heavenly places where you reside. Father, we thank you for Yeshua this morning. He gave his life for us that we can be here. And we also remember those that are going through situations. And this morning we are thankful that you will meet them. That you will take care of their situations. The sick will be healed. The hungry shall be satisfied. The thirst shall be quenched. Because you are God. And we love you. Father, we are here today because this is the day that you have selected for us. That you can minister to us, not only in words, Lord. You want to repair every cell in our body that's been damaged through the week. You want to put together, Lord, every sinew that's been broken through the week. And that's why you have selected this day. That we come and have a rest. Share your word. Have fellowship with you. So that at the end of the day, Lord, we as are hidden here, for those that are watching through streaming this morning, we can stand up boldly and say to you, Father, we love you. Because Yeshua said that if we love you, we obey your command. And we are obeying your command. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you praise. We give you honor. Father, for those that are going through situations in their married life, O oh Lord, right now, in Yeshua's mighty name, hallelujah. You might be listening through streaming this morning. I don't know, but your situation may be at a place where you need to move closer to God. Hallelujah. For some of you that are listening, some of us that are here, there is, this is a decision time for you. And God is speaking to us this morning. There's no time to waste. This is the time to come. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you that you are going to meet the situation for this family, Lord. Hallelujah. That marital situation, Father. We know that family is so important to you. Father, we thank you for financial situations. And what we are going through, Lord, we know that you are taking care of our situation. <coughs> and we speak of joy in our lives as we go through situation. For those that are sick, and this morning, thank you for your healing. Thank you, Yehovah Rapha, this morning. Father, we thank you for all this. We say together in Yeshua's mighty name, 
Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's a very good morning. Shabbat shalom to everyone. Um, today is a, is a really interesting uh, job for us. And the task is really getting to a place for Christians that they need to know what they are doing. Hallelujah. They need to know what they are doing in their lives. And this morning is, a, is an important subject uh, called joy. And this morning, I want to say to you that for the last few weeks, we've been um, getting scriptures that they're speaking of joy, speaking of joy in our lives. And uh, this morning, I, I, I just hope that the, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will talk to us and tell us about the importance of what we're going through in our lives. I know people have been Christians for a long time. They've been attending churches for ages. And there will come a time that you might um, say, I've had enough. There might come a time where the situation that you're going through financially may be marital. And you're saying, is this God really helping me? So the message today is for us to understand, as I've said, for the last few weeks we've been having scriptures that telling us about joy. So as I said last week in this waiting on the Lord, and he gave it to me again, and he said, you need to have joy in your life. Hallelujah. Um, I was coming back yesterday from town <clears throat> and I started to feel pain on the back of my of the heel and I could hardly step and, uh, the, and, and the Lord just dropped the word joy into my heart. You know what? I, I, I actually spoke joy to my feet. I spoke joy to my body. And I said, wow, that is really very powerful. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said that we are defeated by two things. It's the sword from without, which means that people talk about you and they speak ill of you. That can affect us. And also there is a terror from within. Some of us are hit by Anxiety. You must remember when, when you have worry in your life, scientists have proven that there are chemicals that are released from the back of your brain. Hallelujah. And they can be poisonous. They go into your blood cell, in your bloodstream, and they can become cancerous. That's been proven. And that's why we need to have joy in our lives. Some people are going through situation because they are always worried about the situations. They are always worried about what they do. Hallelujah. So today, as you see in our title, is called Joy. Hallelujah. So joy is in three words. Three Hebrew words is simka, Hadva, Sason, and Masus. These are some of the words that are used in, in the Bible translated as joy. We're going to have a look at s some of those and we can see now um, the introduction. <coughs> As you see there, it says... And I said about Deuteronomy 28. I studied 20, 28. And reading about the curses, I asked the Lord on the contributing factor. And this is what he gave to me. Number one, people do not hear the voice of the Lord. That's why the curses come. Hallelujah. So people do not hear the voice of the Lord. And secondly, they do not serve the Lord with joy and gladness. 
Hallelujah. So the last few weeks since we've, been, we've spoken about um, all this hearing the voice. So this week we are going to speak about the joy component and its relevance to our lives individually. Not only our lives individually, but also our lives as families. Hallelujah. And as a nation, we must have this joy in our lives. So we see, <coughs> uh, for example, there are the verses that we came across was Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all these, or his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all the curses shall come upon you, overtake thee. In Deuteronomy 28, 4, it says, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So you see, we need to serve God with joy. And people want to give up church because they cannot find joy anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They have to, uh, all they have is give for this and give for that. Uh, men's fellowship, I mentioned that a few weeks ago. We got men fellowship and youth and all this happening. And what we don't realize is that people are feeling all this in their lives. They are feeling uh, so um, tired because they've lost the joy element of worshiping God. Hallelujah. So, you know, I'm, I'm so glad because see, this morning we've got young people that, um, that are beginning to, to play in the church just to encourage them to bring back the joyfulness so that they, they can serve God with joy. Hallelujah. So it is important for us to understand that. So today we'll look at our text. It's found in Joel chapter 1, verse 12. The Bible said, The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languished. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, the, the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Now, have a look at this. This is an amazing scripture that we can have a look at. And... Um, it says, the trees. Okay, you might think, are well, they talking about trees? But the word of God is so, so um, multi-layered. So that's why we need to understand the word from the Hebrew uh, perspective. So it's so important uh, that we understand. I had a pastor that, that came to see me this week. Uh, we were looking at a scripture of Isaiah chapter 61. And uh, he said to me, man, I am so full spiritually. He said, we, you, we are satisfied like we have a meal and satisfaction comes when we start to look at the word in its meanings, uh, Hebrew meanings. So it's so important to understand the word of God. So in here, it's talking about vine trees, fig trees. And uh, uh, at, one at the first glance, you think that it's, all about trees. Uh, are we talking about plantation? Yes, of course we are talking about plantation. Hallelujah. Because that's how Yeshua taught. He uses branches. He uses the seed. So his teaching aid is right there in front of you. So why don't we look at these things? Because in, 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 in Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible said, the invisible qualities of him are found in the things that are created. So, in other words, if you want to know about God and what he's doing, uh, then, now, and will do, just look at the natural things around you. So, here we are in this Joel chapter 1, verse 12. He's speaking of trees. And he's giving us an illustration that these trees are going to die out if there is no joy. Okay? Now, he's using this tree so that we can know uh, what is happening now. First, let me, let me talk about the word joy. As I've said earlier, the word joy comes in a few Hebrew words. Okay? The first one is found in um, Joel, uh, uh, still there, 
uh, Joel, in our, in our text, the Hebrew word used is sasun. Hallelujah. Sasun is the word there. So it means joyful, comes from the Hebrew root word sus, meaning to be bright and cheerful. So sasun means to be bright and cheerful. Hallelujah. Have you seen a person like that? That comes around and is always bright and always cheerful. Um, it's so important for us to, to understand that Sassoon is one of the words that is used for joy in the Bible. So we also see there's another word here, Simka. The word is Simka. Hallelujah. Simka. 1 Kings 140. All and all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes, and rejoiced with great joy, and the word is Simka, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. Now let me just explain about this word Simka. Um, Yeshua said to us that I'm going to give you power so that you can trample over serpent and scorpion. Now, if you do have a chance to read the Jewish Orthodox Bible version of this, it says, I will give you a kawek, that's a power, and simka. So in other words, right from the Bible, that's, by the way, that's not translated in your Bible. It's sadly because I think we've missed the, one of the elements of serving God. It says there, I'll give you power and joy. So you must have joy when you are using the power of God. It should bring to you joy. Hallelujah. That's the word simka here. And the other Hebrew word that is used is chadva. It's found in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, um, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry for the joy, the chadva, of the Lord is your strength. And the other word is, I'm going to go quickly to, to uh, Job chapter 8, verse 19. Behold, this is the joy. Now, it's used, masseuse of his way and out of the earth shall others grow. So now that we have covered that, don't go, I, I probably will go into details later um, in another sermon if the Lord allows it. But I just want to say to you that the word joy comes in a few, a few Hebrew words. Uh, and the translation is uh, all joy. So we got kadva. Uh, simka uh, and um, Mesus. These are the words that's been used in the Bible. But first let's go to a, a verse. Again, it's in Joel chapter 1, verse 12. So it says the vine. I want us to look at this word. The vine is dried up. What is the vine? What is the vine? And vine, oh, I got vibe there. To apologize should have been vine. It's hagafen. You know, there's a there's a prayer that when when we pray uh, the Shabbat uh, um, and we say Barukata Donai Elinu Melek Haolam, and we speak of the wine as hagafen, Boreperi Agafen. So, bless are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who brought forth wine from the vine. See. Boreperi, the fruit of the vine, from agafen, from the vine. So in here, the word is um, agafen. And the Hebrew word uh, in which this comes from is here in your screen. You can see that. Okay, agafen. To bend. It means to bend. Twining, especially vine. When you bend, you are bowing, presenting a prayer posture. Okay, I, I just want to pause here and explain to you. See, the vine needs 
um, flexibility to wind its way through other supports. It cannot stand on its own. Hallelujah. So it means that it has to bow down to the support to go around. It bows, then it goes around. So it gives you a posture. So what Joel is saying is your prayer life has become dried up. Hallelujah. Why? Because there's no joy in our life. When there is no joy in your life, the, your prayer life becomes dry. Hallelujah. And it's saying here that the vine become a dried up. Hallelujah. So what is so important here that he's using this word? Uh, and it, it, uh, the word prayer is arak. Arak in Hebrew. It comes from Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. So remember that without joy, your, your prayer life becomes dry. Hallelujah. So you don't have to ask anymore. So what happens? The vine cannot wind its way because it's dried up. Here, my voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look. The word translated as prayer means to arrange, to put in order, to direct, to esteem, to furnish, to join a battle. So you see, what happens here is prayer is not just getting into your knees and pray. Hallelujah. So prayer, you need to get into your knees and arrange things. Prayer is when you put things in order. Okay, maybe, Father, you are the creator of the universe. Exalt him. Exalt him. Hallelujah. And you say to him, Father, you know me better than I do. Hallelujah. What are you doing? You're putting in order. You're putting in order. And after that, direct. Father, thank you for the prayers for my family that lives thousands of miles away. That's what you do in a prayer. You esteem yourself, you furnish, and not only that, you're joining a battle. You're joining a battle in prayer. So, the only thing that will draw you to stay up, you know, and do all these things, put in order to esteem, to direct, only if you have joy in doing it. You know, when anything that you do in the world, if you don't have joy, you're going to have a problem trying to complete it. Because even in your work, if you don't have joy in your work, you are a person that's going to change employment from here, from here to there. Because you don't have joy in what you're doing. I remember when I used to work for a company here. By the time I leave to go home, I know exactly what I'm doing tomorrow. Because I've arranged myself to do that. I look forward to coming back. Why? Because I find joy in doing it. And that's the same with attending church. You give up church because you don't have joy anymore. My friend, if you are lacking that joy today, today is the day to start. And we'll find uh, later in the, before we finish, how to get back this joy. Hallelujah. But for a moment, I'm talking about prayer. Hallelujah. So, in here, uh, things to do in prayer. You put in order your affairs by asking Adonai to forgive. You direct to him all exaltation. You show reverence. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And when you pray, you are joining a battle. So, these are the things you do in prayer. Hallelujah. These are the things you do in prayer. You put your affairs by asking Adonai to forgive you. That's putting your affairs in order. Hallelujah. If you've spoken ill about someone, say, Father, forgive me for doing this. What's happening? You're putting your life in order. And you direct to him all the glory, the honor, the majesty that rightfully belongs to him. That's what you do in a prayer. And you show reverence. Sometimes you need to wait. Stop talking and just listen to what God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Can you see what's happening? It takes time. 
You can go for five minutes and you can go for five hours. It depending on the level of joy you have in your relationship with your heavenly father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another word for prayer we see is here, uh, there. It's um, tipalti. Tipalti, hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Tipalti is an inflection of the Hebrew word palal, meaning to judge officially or mentally. Also mean to pray and intercede. The most common Hebrew word describes the most common act of prayer. So you see, the word plural means, uh, as you see, inflected here, and it gives you tipalti, which is the word for my prayer, is also the word, it comes from the word palal, which means to judge. Which means to judge. So when you're praying, you're judging. Not judging others, you're judging yourself. How am I doing? How is it my life? Is it when I'm on my own, am I doing what God wants? Or am I on my own, I'm doing these things that I'm not supposed to be doing? When you're praying, you are judging. When you're praying, you're doing all these things. Hallelujah. So you see, prayer will come. Your vine is going to dry up if you don't have joy. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7. And seek the peace of the city whether I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. Here Jeremiah asking to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You ask for the peace of Jerusalem. Have you asked for the peace of Jerusalem whenever you pray? You try. Hallelujah. Because there is a blessing. It says that wherever your enemies are, they are also the enemy. Now we have a look at the next tree. The next tree is the fig tree. Hallelujah. So it says here, and the fig tree, and the word is teena, languished. The word teena, as you see there, means the opportunity, your purpose. Hallelujah. So let me just, also go into the next word, language. The word language comes from the Hebrew word amal, meaning language, feeble, droop, weak, or sick. Now we're talking about fig tree. Notice that. One moment we are talking about fig tree. And now, next thing, something else comes up. Now we see in the fig tree, hallelujah, uh, it means, it comes with the word language. Hallelujah. And the word amal is feeble. So tenan means your purpose or your opportunity. Your purpose or your opportunity. So when you don't have joy in your life, when you don't have joy in your life, your opportunity you don't see. Hallelujah. It's hard to see your opportunity let alone grabbing all uh, uh, your opportunity. You can't see your purpose. That's when your life is dry. When your life doesn't have joy. Thank you, Mimi. Hallelujah. So, when your life don't have joy, you can't see your purpose. When your life don't have joy, you don't grab your opportunity. Because you don't know your purpose. Hallelujah. And when we talk about fig tree. Now that's a simple verse in Joel chapter 1. And notice. When it spoke of vine. It spoke of the dryness of our prayer. Now when it speaks of fig tree. It speaks of us missing our opportunity and purpose. Because when we don't have joy in, in Adonai Elohim. When we don't have joy. We miss our purpose. Therefore, we don't grab our opportunity because we don't know what it is. Hallelujah. So it's very, very important for us to see. And the, the next tree is pomegranate. It comes from this word, uh, remon. Okay, so the pomegranate tree, 
the palm tree, the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. That's when you don't have joy. When you don't have joy, your pomegranate. So here you see Ramon, a pomegranate is a, the tree that gets its name from being upright. What does it mean? When is, your uprightness is affected when you don't have joy. Hallelujah. You have shame. Hallelujah. You don't stand up boldly anymore because you don't have joy in your life. Hallelujah. So without joy, you lose perception of your position. Hallelujah. And the word yabesh, which means dried up, withered, ashamed, confused, and disappointed. So when you lose your position, hallelujah, it's, it's very hard to, to find where you're going. I, I was watching uh, um, an air crash investigation about um, John F. Kennedy Jr. And they reckon he lost his position. He didn't know where he was. So that's the same as our spiritual life. We are going to lose our position. Not only we are going to miss our opportunity. Not only that we, our prayer life becomes so, um, so, so um, small. You don't, don't know how to pray. Your prayer is only come, thank you Father for this morning and then you're gone. No, prayer, you need to take time. I'm not against short prayer. Yes, you can have short prayer. Hallelujah. But when you stand and enjoy God, you, you know that you only enjoy the company of people that you enjoy being with. Eh? You love to speak to them for longer. Why? Because you enjoy their company. Hallelujah. And the palm tree, if we look at the palm tree, hallelujah, it comes from the word tamar. Tamar means to be erect, to be strong, to be rigid. Without joy, our worship, without joy in our worship, we lose strength and confidence. And we are dried up. We are withered. Hallelujah. And another word that, another tree is tapuk. Uh, tapuk. Tapuk is the word that comes which means apple, it comes from the root word napach, meaning to inflate, to puff, to blow hard. So without joy in our lives, we become powerless, we deflate, and we become depressed. We come withered. So here the word withered, dried up, all the trees are withered. How can we be healthy if the source of our nutrition withers? Now, speaking of trees, speaking of trees, it's so important to understand that right from the beginning, God said to them, all these trees are meat to you. Now, all the trees, so every nutritious thing in your life when you don't have joy, you're going to be sick. When you don't have joy, you're going to lose focus. When, do you, when you don't have joy, you're going to lose your rigidity, you're going to lose your uprightness in life. So it's so important for that. Now this morning, we are going to try and find out how to restore, to salvage the situation. Hallelujah. So we look into our scriptures here in... Um, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way. Now listen to that. He said unto them, Go your way. To do what? To eat the fat. And then to drink the sweet. And then to send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Three things we need to do. Eat the fat. Drink the sweet. And send the portion unto them for whom nothing is prepared. You know, just coming this morning, I saw uh, a couple of guys just sitting there, and they were probably drunk from last night. But just around the corner as we came past, we saw them. 
sleeping. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, and I thought, boy, those people have nothing prepared for them. Hallelujah. So to restore joy in our life, listen carefully to what Nehemiah is saying. You must eat the fat, you must drink the sweet, okay? And give the, send the portions to those that have nothing prepared for. Can I say it again? It said, eat the fat, drink the sweet. Is that what they discourage you to do? Don't eat the fat, it's bad for you. Don't drink too much sweet because it's bad for you as well. And the Bible is saying here, Nehemiah is saying, for you to restore this joy in your life, you need to eat fat. You need to drink the sweet. And also remember those that don't have anything prepared for them. Let me tell you something. That's one of the fifth. That's one of the fifth, uh, one of the five, <coughs> one of the five pillars of Islam is compulsory charity. Do you think we, we are the only religion that have it? Islam also has charity, but they have a different meaning. <coughs> they do that so that they can be seen doing it. So that they can tell the world, yeah, we give to the poor. We give to the needy. No. You and me, the Bible says that whatever your left hand gives, your right hand must not know. Huh? Whatever your right hand, uh, your left hand does, your right hand should know what your left hand is doing. That's, that's who we are. If you want to send out portions to the people that uh, have nothing prepared for them, you must know that we shouldn't tell the world about it. That's the difference between us and Islam. Because Islam do it so that they can be known. Oh yeah, we are religion of, uh, of giving. The next minute they meet you in the dark corner, they bring a knife to your neck and they cut it off. That's the difference between you and me. When we give, our left hand doesn't even know what your right hand is, doing, is giving. That's who we are. We don't tell the world that we give. Prepare portions for those that have nothing prepared. Hallelujah. And we don't cut off their neck when we meet them in the corner. We love them. That's the difference that we have here. Now, we'll have a look at these words in detail. It says, eat the fat. Okay? The word is akal, to eat or consume. Preferably the fatness, it comes from the word, is mashmayim, meaning rich with nutrition. Okay? I, I like when I see chicken that are roasted, I actually particularly like the skin. I didn't know that's the, the, the unhealthiest part of the chicken is the skin. I love it though. I love it. So the fat here comes from the word mashmayin, which means nutrition. Hallelujah. What else is more healthy in our spiritual life than the word of God? We must eat my body because this is good for you. If you don't eat my body, Yeshua said, you don't have life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not cannibalism. It meaning that you take in the word of God. It's eating and getting yourself to the word of God. That's very important for us. Hallelujah. Eat. Timothy, then, uh, it means to feed ourselves with the richness of God's word. Study the word. In, first, in 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to understand that we need to share the word of God in truth. Hallelujah. So, also it says not only to eat the fat or to eat nutritious food. That is the word of God spiritually. Also, to drink the sweet. 
Now, the word sweet comes from memtakim. Okay? Memtakim comes from the root word, of, uh, the matak that gives the idea to relish, to make pleasant to the taste. Drink translated from sheta. Another Hebrew word, the same spelling, is um, shata, meaning basis of foundation. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, it says, for other foundation can no man lay there that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, let me say this to you. There's no other foundation. We need to lay the foundation of whatever we're doing through Yeshua. He is the only foundation that's there for you. He is the only foundation that need to be uh, your walk to be founded in. Hallelujah. So, study the word and be founded on your show. Hallelujah. And third but not least, the last but not least, rather, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. When you eat and drink, do not forget those that have nothing prepared. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Must consider the poor. Learn to understand what they're going through. Think of them because they have nothing prepared for them. Hallelujah. And apart from them, go away from worry. Do not worry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minnie. Hallelujah. Do not worry. Okay? You need to understand that. Think of the poor. You eat nutrition food. Spiritually, word is. You must dig the word. Hallelujah. When I'm praying, you go home and take this scripture. Study it. Don't trust my word for it. Trust the word of God. And make sure it's founded on Yeshua. Everything I'm saying, if it's not founded in Yeshua, hallelujah, throw it away. You must understand everything that I'm doing must be founded on Yeshua. And everything you are doing must be founded on Yeshua. Hallelujah. And worry. This word is, keeps coming up. It's something that is really, really affecting people. This word means to hurt, to grieve, to worry, sorry, or pain. Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. That is the opposite of worry. Hallelujah. To, the, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Philippians um, 4, 7 says in the King James, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Messiah Yeshua. So you see, the peace of God is very important. For you to restore the joy, you need to eat the fat. In other words, nutrition is very important. Hallelujah. To eat the fat. And then you need to drink the sweet. Hallelujah. Foundation is important of what you do. Let that be a sign that you want to have joy back in your life. Hallelujah. And in conclusion this morning, hallelujah. In conclusion this morning, Psalm chapter 5 verse 11. But let all those that put their truth, uh, their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Hallelujah. Rejoice that he will defend you. Rejoice is very, very important in your life. To have joy in your life. It's very important. So you see, it is so important for us as we understand God's word. Hallelujah. To have joy in our lives. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Praise God. So this morning, I just want you to understand this. You need to bring back the joy in your life. Hallelujah. I know there are people that are so hooked up with the work in the church. Hallelujah. They need to understand that they don't need to be affected by other things. We just need to eat the fat. That means go to the word to have nutrition. And then drink the sweet. Everything done needs to be founded on Yeshua. And then make sure that we look after the poor. For those that, are, that don't have anything, nothing prepared for them, you must look after them. Hallelujah. Try and do that one day. Once a day is nice. Okay? I remember, let me just finish with this. When I was still working, I was waiting to buy lunch in a, <clears throat> in a sandwich place. And as I was standing there, I saw this homeless guy came up and was asking the people behind the counter if he could have some stale bread. My heart went up to this man and I said to the guys, can you, whatever I'm having, can you prepare too? And the second one, you make sure you give it to this gentleman. He didn't hear that. So I got mine and they apparently gave him the one that was prepared for him. I was walking about five, six paces. I could hear the rustling noise behind me because he's coming with his, all his bags because he had his wardrobe with him as well. He's got bags rustling and I can hear him trying to hurry up. And he came up to me and he said to me, Sir, thank you. He was asking for bread that are stale. All I'm asking is if you want joy back in, you know, the whole afternoon is done for me. I was so happy because I'm able to give something. I didn't know this scripture then. Never knew this scripture back in those years. Well, I've read it. I didn't know the meaning as I know now. But I remember, still remember the joy that came to me just when he said, thank you. I know he's going to be filled because there's nothing filled for him or prepared for him. I felt joy. My afternoon was so good. I felt good in my what I'm doing. <clears throat> Try and at least see one person in a day. Even if you just talk to them, hey, hello, how are you? That's a big, some of these people, nobody wants to talk to them because of what, you know, how, what they smell like. So nobody wants to talk to them because of what they look like. For someone to come up and say to them, hello, <coughs> it's a big thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you to pray before we go to Emmanuel this morning. Hallelujah. 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 If I can take you back to this. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the joy. Hallelujah. Thank you that you can show us to go back and having the joy is to eat the fat, drink the sweet. <coughs> Hallelujah. This morning we pray and we praise you for what you're doing in our lives. And Father, we are grateful for what you're doing today in our lives. We are grateful for the great things ahead because you prepare our table even in front of our enemies. Hallelujah. And Father, we just thank you this morning. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you honor. Majesty. Hallelujah. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. And everybody say with me, Amen.
Shalom. Shalom, Pastor Ray. Go, go ahead. Uh. Thank you. Let us have Holy Communion. <laughs> Yeshua said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And whosoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. And Yeshua said, Be, I am the bread of life, and he who comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Father, I, Elohim, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Yeshua, that whosoever believeth in Yeshua shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread and gave thanks. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem in hari. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, "This is my body that is for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me." And in the same way, after supper, Yeshua took the cup and gave thanks. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam ore beri agape. He gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink, for as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Adonai's death until he comes. Therefore, a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For if anyone eats and drinks without recognizing the body of Adonai, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why. Many among you are weak and sick. The number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by Adonai, why when we are being judged by Adonai, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. And Father, as we come before you this morning, we appropriate all the seven divine exchanges on the cross on our lives. Yeshua was rejected, that we are accepted by our Elohim, our Heavenly Father. Yeshua was cursed, that we are blessed blessings of heaven. Yes, Yeshua bore shame. We share in his glory. Yeshua endured poverty. And we share in his abundance. Yeshua was punished. We are forgiven for our sins. Yeshua was wounded for our transgressions. Yeshua was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with Yeshua's stripes, we are healed of all sicknesses and all diseases. Yeshua died our death, that we have everlasting life. Hallelujah. 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 I invite us to partake of a cup and the bread. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the body. 
This morning we give you praise. Thank you for Yeshua dying for us at the cross. And we do this to remember. Hallelujah. Remember that it's important, O oh Lord. And Father, we remember those that are watching through streaming this morning. Those that are going through situations. Let this be an assurance for them. Thank you for joy in our lives. As we speak joy of our lives over our family. Father, we thank you for restoring us this morning in the joy as we begin to eat this, the fat and drink the sweet. And this morning, Father, we also remember for our tithes and our offering, Lord, those that are giving to the bags this morning and those that are doing electronic banking. Father, that you will appropriate their word, their lives with your word. To your word, O oh Lord, that they be nourished. And this morning, we give you praise, O oh Lord. Father, we give you back the honor that rightfully belongs to you. And this we give you thanks in Yeshua's mighty name and everybody says Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for watching just once more. Thank you. It's brilliant. The boys uh, woke up early this morning and we are grateful and whatever is happening uh, to our church and uh, as we begin to move to just enjoy watching God work in our lives and for those of you that are watching by streaming I haven't got the list but I'm sure we have um, hallelujah we got uh, Loata, Gabriela uh, June and uh, Nakelo, uh, Taltale Mosi, uh, I think you're there now. So, Central Messianic, Lotoka, Chris, and the family, a big thank you. Um, and I think uh, Great Britain, last week we had two from America. Um, we actually had the, the CEO, the head, one of the founders of the, the, the streaming company that we are using at the moment. We had one of them watching us last week. So, um, in Great Britain too. Of course, we had Marshall Island. Um, and uh, it's a big thank you to all of us that are supporting. And, but most importantly, for just coming together in fellowship as we begin to build our lives. Build our lives in Yeshua's mighty name. Hallelujah. So this morning from all of us here in Sydney, Australia, we want to say Shabbat Shalom and Shavuot. Hallelujah.